Hello everyone and welcome to this quick planet tutorial where we're going to see how to model this little play-doh-like flight of stairs from scratch. By the end of the video you'll know how to transform Blender's basic startup cube into this simple shape thanks to the powers of the array modifier, the snapping tool and the bevels. Alright, so let's hop into Blender and start by modeling a single step for stairs. To do this we can simply tap into edit mode, rescale our cube to make it flatter and reduce its depth along the y-axis a bit. Then, as usual, we can also move it up slightly to make sure that the object's pivot point is on the xy plane. Now that we have this single step, we want to repeat it to actually create a flight of stairs. We can do this very easily thanks to Blender's array modifier that we talked about in this previous episode of the series. But this time, we're going to stick with the default relative offset and we're simply going to put it on the y-axis instead of the x-axis. You see that this creates a copy of my step next to the original one that has just the same size and is perfectly placed next to it. That's because the offset considers the size of our mesh and it uses this dimension to determine the translation to apply. So we can actually do the same thing on the z-axis and you see that we instantly get two steps that are perfectly aligned to make a very small flight of stairs. But then to make it longer, we just need to increase the number of copies in our array modifier, and that's it, you see that we now have several steps all lined up. Of course, because the array modifier is dynamic, you can also rescale the step as you like, and you see that everything just adapts to fit the new dimensions. Finally, when we're satisfied with the size of our stairs and steps, we can hover the array modifier in the bottom right panel and press Ctrl plus A to apply it. Now, to fill in the sides of the stairs, let's start by bringing those lower faces down to align with the first one. We can do this by first pressing S and Z to scale them along the vertical Z axis and then 0 to force them to shrink to the same altitude. And then, if we enable the snapping tool and switch it to the vertex mode, we just need to grab our faces and hover this reference bottom vertex to auto-snap the selected faces to this Z value. Okay, that looks cool, but if you're a bit familiar with 3D modeling, you probably know that having objects next to each other without actual edges connecting them is not a great way to do things. Basically, that's what we call a bad topology, and it can make for a lot of rendering issues later on, be it lighting artifacts or even performance syncs if you decide to use your model in a game engine for real-time 3D. Of course, here, the model isn't very complex, so you could probably avoid a lot of those issues. But I think it's still a good habit to have a quick look at if and how you can improve the topology of your models. Typically, in our case, we kind of feel like if we could just extend those edges to the other blocks, then we would already have a way better topology. We can do this by using Ctrl plus R to bring up the loop cut tool, and then pressing M to use the merge by distance tool to join together really close vertices. And now you notice that if I select this point, it's indeed linked to all the nearest vertices as expected. We can then do the same for the rest of the blocks, and we can reuse the snapping tool to move our new edges to the right set altitude before finally remerging all vertices by distance. Of course, when you're done, don't forget to enable the wireframe mode and remove the faces inside that are leftovers of our previous full height blocks. And here we are. If we try to make a loop cut along our main stairs shape, we notice that Blender can indeed compute the path. We get the loop that we would expect, which is an easy and usually pretty accurate method for checking that your topology is fairly okay. Alright, so at this point we have a simple stairs model that is quite cool, and we could go to render shading mode, add some point lights in the scene, and give our object a simple material to see how it looks. Note that if you want to make stone stairs, like I'm making here, so grey stairs, a good trick can be to give a small hint of colour to your stone grey, instead of just keeping it purely desaturated. Here you see that a hint of blue helps give a more appealing visual overall. And you should obviously also increase the roughness of the material to not make it too shiny. 
Now to wrap up this tutorial, let's see how to transform this shape to make it even more interesting, with the little cracks, dents and irregularities that I showed at the beginning of the video. To begin with, we can of course do the same thing as we did in the previous videos of the series, and use a bevel modifier with a vertex group based limit method to smooth some of our edges. Although contrary to our previous models, we might want to make our stairs a bit more rough, so we may want to stick with just one segment in the bevel modifier. Ok, that's a nice addition, but that's not enough. To really give life to these stairs and make it as though they've lived and got scratched over time, we're going to use the manual vertex bevel tool to create little dents in the stone. So first, let's do a loop cut along the main axis of our stairs, and then we'll select some vertices and move them at random along their edges. Then we'll select those vertices and press Ctrl plus Shift plus B to bevel them. You see that this instantly creates a little diamond shaped crack, and then we can of course rescale it to enhance the effect, and apply the same technique to other points of our object to create this old and damaged look. One last little bonus trick is to also take some of our vertices at the edge of the steps and lower or raise them to avoid having those flat steps. Just by bringing down or up a few points, we see that we get more of an ancient look. But anyway, there you go! You now know how to transform Blender's startup cube into a simple, cute flight of stairs. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned a few things. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. It always helps when you join the community and show your support. And of course, if you have other ideas of cool Blender tricks that you'd like to learn, tell me in the comments. As usual, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.